prophecies hidden in the book of Acts. This is Dan Bertrand Griffey. Something I found laying in the book of Acts, chapter 20, overwhelmed me. Biblical prophecy shows up sometimes in burst where you don't expect it. It starts in verse 19, and if you coalesce that chapter and verse into the year 2019, you get a prophetic burst for several verses that may have laid out what the world has gone through for the past few years. You be the judge. Serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations. Contemporary English version translate plotted and English revised version says lowliness of mind. Humility of mind and many tears. So lowliness of mind. So if we bring this forward in time to the year 2019, just a year before the year of the ill that kills showed up, you have a worldwide population humbled in mind, or if you will allow me to insert a modern phrase in its place, dumbed down. You will see how that fits in a second, which paints the picture of a world population without its knowing in a state of humility of mind, or as some translations say, plotted lowliness of mind, a design dumbing down of the population, tears depressed inwardly, but perhaps not showing it outwardly, in a world filled with temptations. This was the setup as the world was exiting 2019, which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews. Aramic Bible says, Treachery of the Jews. Duray Rems translation says, Conspiracy of the Jews. Now, to put this in perspective, the Apostle Paul, 2,000 years ago, is having to deal with a treacherous conspiracy coming from his fellow countrymen, the Jews. This brings us to the question, is the Jewish people who descended from the tribe of Judah, which is just one of the twelve different Hebrew tribes that were fathered by Jacob, a Hebrew, not a Jew, his son Judah formed the Jews he, Jacob, did not. So the descendants of Judah were called Jews, not the descendants of Jacob. The Jews are not a race of people. They are one tribe in the Hebrew race. The race they come from is called Hebrews. That is why when the Bible speaks of Israel, it speaks of all twelve tribes together unless, of course, it is speaking about the northern kingdom, then it is speaking of ten of the twelve tribes, and the tribe of Judah was not one of those ten northern tribes. When it speaks of the tribe of Judah, it refers to them as Jews. So that's why the Bible, if you ever wondered why the Bible never speaks of the Jews before, only until after Judah shows up, that is why. They were always called Hebrew, and that's why they were called Hebrews, because that's what their race was. We return to the question, is the Jewish people leading a worldwide conspiracy that is directed against Christianity? This chapter 20, verse 19 in Acts, at first glance, seems to imply such a thing. Until you understand that in Paul's day, the Holy Land where Christianity was started, the Holy Land was the Holy Land before the Jews got to control it. Christianity was started by Jews. To try to stop Christianity, the devil 
controlled the leaders of the Jews and moved the Jewish leaders against the Jewish Christians. How was the devil able to do this? That is explained in the third temptation of the Jewish carpenter named Jesus about who controls the kingdoms and nations of the world is settled in that third temptation. When the devil took Jesus up upon the pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem, he offered Jesus control of all racial leaders and all nations and kingdoms in the world. The devil offered Jesus what he would eventually give his son in the tribulation period, a person we know as the Antichrist. The conspiracy against Christianity, against mankind, is not a Jewish conspiracy, but a racial leadership of all races conspiracy. The devil is using the racial leadership he controls to genocide all races. We Christians are the only ones with the Holy Ghost who is made up of all races. We Christians are the only ones who have the power from the Holy Ghost to stand in the way of this worldwide racial conspiracy and slow it down as we harvest souls out of every race. No other people have the ability to do this. We are uniquely empowered to do it because of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So we have the year 2019. Our world population has been dumbed down, depressed, and overrun with temptations. Does that about sum up the year? And oh yeah, somebody did it to them. The overwhelming vast majority of the population is walking around in a fog without any expectation of what is going to take place worldwide early in the next year. And this is just the beginning of one of the prophetical burst found in the biblical book of Acts. We enter the year 2020, which coincides with the biblical book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 20. And how I keep back nothing that was profitable unto you. In the year 2020, for the first few months, the prosperity gospel had reached its peak it would never get any bigger than it was then. But have showed you and have taught you publicly in a very defined way of saying it, the prosperity gospel preachers had for several decades prior taken the keys away from the denominations who were barely holding on to them with their salvation-only messages once saved, always saved, no matter what you do, doctrinal stance. At this time, at least in America, the denominational churches were starving to death, trying to hold on to the few people who were dying in the pews as the evangelical barns were full to bursting with the most shallow, self-absorbed, immature saints that Christianity in the past 2,000 years had produced. Now, the evangelicals, as I'm speaking this, are in free fall. And from house to house, that all changed toward the end of April, when both denominational tombs and the huge evangelical barns were shut down by government edicts worldwide that considered them non-essential, a term that had not been applied to Christian meetings since the first century Caesars tried to shut down the catacombs. And even more shocking, these church ministers, elders, deacons, and parishioners must have agreed 
they stayed home. What heaven was trying to tell both movements for decades, which both refused to hear, the government explained in no uncertain terms to them overnight, and they got the message. You have compromised yourself into unimportance. What the first century writer of Acts calls house to house, the 21st century Christian experienced in lockdown. Heaven drugged the church, kicking and screaming back to its roots. The church was again in its houses. The church was soon to become not only relevant to the society they are in, but in just a few years critical and even vitally essential. As the hidden evil becomes more apparent and the darkness grew more powerful, societies of the nations became more and more under the control of tyrants. The Holy Spirit drives the saints deeper into the Spirit and forces them into maturity, their armor being forged by necessity and want, the sword sharpened by spiritual warfare. The immature now has to quickly grow up. Please join us again in part two as we continue the prophetical layout of the 20th chapter of Acts for the 21st century Christians. This is Dan Petran Griffey. Until we meet again, I pray that the Lord be with yours and you in Jesus' name.